Okay. I'm ready. One. Can you zoom in on that, Neil? You just do. You got that? There we go. I want the sweatshirt. How come you get this one? I like that one. I know. It's nice. It's mine. Everybody, guess what? Buell's back! <laughs> should, we yeah. tell, should we tell take two? It's the Buell we've had, take we've two. We've had a number of take two shows recently. I was hypoglycemic last time. Is that trending, Neil? Is that what's going on right now? Can we, what, can, we put it down, can we put it down to her? Well, It's, it's, it's when it's, you don't eat enough food or have enough sugar in your system and then you drink a margarita or four. Possibly that could have been Maybe. what happened the during the last the show. Bartender at, at, she's that was yesterday, she, dude. We're talking about today. But yeah, I would yeah. like to talk about today. Okay. East Side right. Eatery. Is, right. They, they the nachos are, were good tonight. Yeah, they were really good. Yeah. Neil, what show number are we on 952. tonight? 952. Uh, wow, 952. Mm -hmm. I think Buell is on his... The last show was his fifth. Fifth? Seven. This is not your six, I think. Now, see how did I get? How did I work a six show? I know. Hey, you know I'm a shameless self-promoter. Because self number five, promoter. I got all hammered. <laughs> shameless self-promoter. Welcome back. I had a lot to say last time, but I couldn't get it out. I was like, beep, 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 beep. well, you know, Neil, how we sometimes we uh, we used to go to dinner after the show with the guests, yep. and we always said the best show yep. was, was after. after the show. Yeah. yeah. That's when, we like, did a great show at the well, it was, we, we did a pre-show. Yeah, the pre-show was, was amazing. And what you, you said—that's what you, we need. That's what, we, that's what we're going on. We're going to we go on the road. all of our good material at mm -hmm. the eatery. Well, we're taking it on the road. But what you said that night was there was um, some business secrets. There was controversial stuff. There was call-outs. Oh my god! There was <laughs> shakedowns. <laughs> Shake there was like. Idle threats? What, like Suge Knight holding vanilla ice over the balcony? See, I feel like I should have had something recording that, you know? <laughs> and that would be like the secret. Somebody. I, the leaked I, camp. Yeah. I told my buddies on the my the softball team, the meat sticks I'm all, they were all excited. Like, How, how'd the show go? I'm all. And they're like, uh, is it up? Can we watch it? I'm all, no. <laughs> and they're like, why not? And I'm all, eh. And they're all, somebody screen recorded that thing. <laughs> It's going to come out. <laughs> don't feel, don't recorded, feel bad. I have it recorded. Well, I will pay big money to make sure that thing never hits the airwaves again. I won't hit the airwaves. If don't you were lucky enough... If you say it doesn't want to hit... If you say don't hit... <laughs> I'm joking. I you am, know the thing is? I'm Adam Rapogel said the same thing. <laughs> I'm an open book. No, he didn't yeah, say anything. Like, the show ended up to be you and I because he didn't say one word. Well, it, is well, it not true? Cat, the cat had my tongue. Is it not true when the, when we, you had the, the, I went to Mexico and Barney was coming? And you're like, Buell's coming on. I got it covered. Yeah. And on that show, I speak, didn't on. Barney I talk speak, the whole time? I speak Barney. I spoke Barney. <laughs> Barney. And then he, he clammed up. <laughs> and up Barney's like, gah, 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 Oh, no, no, no. I was interjecting. I just was letting him go. I mean, he had such great ideas. He brought a watermelon and mm. he wanted a Gallagher... The watermelon. Yeah, um, he had bought a watermelon. Neil, can you please yeah, share yeah, that it. show tomorrow? Yeah. So anybody I'm watching, show. it's yeah. probably the most epic show. I mean, I'm he not. Brought, he brought. A, I, he brought a the watermelon. TV. He put, he put the watermelon. It was the best show of all time. Just, it, it, it was the watermelon with a baseball bat. Yeah. Because he's gonna beat the shit out of it and do a Gallagher. Yeah. So I. It's, it's, he Who's also it? brought a VCR, a VCR and a TV, TV, and you told him it was radio. <laughs> yeah. and he, we were also video. Unbelievable. Was, honey. It was really good. <laughs> hey, love you, Barney. <laughs> yeah. My man. Hey, Barney says, <laughs> so what? That's what he Trophy said. Trophy man. That's what he okay. said that night. Just for the record, Barney rides with me always. Can you zoom in on that? The Barney tattoo? Can you get that in there? Barney rides with me always. Uh, yeah. uh, and when did you get that speaking, tattoo? In, uh, the day after he passed. Uh, luckily, uh, you know, Kevin Walsh is right. one of the best yeah. tattoo Walsh, artists. Yeah, of and course. He was, we all gathered at the lane after it happened. It was so surreal. Like, uh, where, well, where were you when you found out Barney had passed? God, that you was remember? one of those moments like, where were you when, yeah, when Kennedy, Kennedy died? Right. And I, I know uh, you know. I was I was in my shop. I just opened the shop on Dufour Street, and Barney stopped in the day previous, and I had a brand new orange and blue suit for him. Fact mm. is, is I, that I Denver got, Bronco colors. What fact is, that? is, fact is, I got I was using scraps. Mm. Like we had leftover colors, and I made some wild stuff. And when I saw these couples, 
wild suits come in. I'm like, that one's for Barney. Called him up, and I was like, I made you a custom. <laughs> Out of scratch. <laughs> He didn't get it. it was a later on in his career. But he came into the shop and he had such a big smile and he's like, it's all about social media, Buell. Then he put on the wetsuit, walked around on his hands, mm-hmm. said a bunch of funny stuff. I think his dog pooped in my shop. <laughs> and then he, he said, I'm going to go get the shot, Buell. I'm going to go get the shot. I'm like, you go get the shot. I later talked to Flea, who was with him mm-hmm. on that epic his first go in that new blue and orange suit and uh you know after the dust settled after he passed away flea got a hold of me he's like dude barney was so appreciative because it had been so long since a sponsor had treated him fuck Mm -hmm. uh it had been so long since a sponsor had treated him like that uh it was just what he needed and you know, he really wanted to go get clips and surf and get barreled and do huge airs, but he wanted a platform to do it on. And just giving him that new suit, I, I could tell he was psyching. And he went out to Mitchell's by himself, booties over the top of his wetsuit, which hmm. was kind of a new thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't do it previously, but later hmm. on in his life, he hmm. decided that's how he was running. I can see some wings on him or something. But... There's a photographer, I think. Jake Thomas, I think, happened to be there to capture it. And uh, his last wave, he got barreled off his ass hmm. at Mitchell's. His, the last wave the last Barney wave. ever rode. Yeah, he got, in uh, that brand new suit. And then he went back home and he decided he was he decided to uh, do uh, vigorous yard work at the house that he owned. And mm-hmm. anybody who'd ever been to his house knows that it's like a art it was a gallery it was cool. so i mean yeah. he was making you know mosaic sculptures fireplaces around his hot tub and mm-hmm. i mean if you could imagine barney's creativity at his own house was wild and, mm-hmm. uh it was hot and he was working hard and hmm. he had an aneurysm who, who aneurysm. called you how did i hear he had a pulmonary, he had a pulmonary, I don't know, I, he had a pulmonary embolism and yeah. yeah, and it it was, you know, a lot of people talk about, you know, what was it? How how did Barney die? And quite frankly, you know, I mean, there was some hard living in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, being a pro surfer, the, Volcom had their edge, their creativity, their fun, all that stuff was <laughs> was <laughs> that stuff was Barney. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like. And, you know, what everyone loved about Barney was how creative and wild and cool and kooky he was. Yeah. And, you know, when to some people that became not as funny and they kind of disregarded him, you know, it was it was very hard. It was hard for Barney, you know, like he didn't know he'd, he'd know one life and that was being a professional surfer. And yeah. so, yeah, that... That transition was a, hard. I had a pulmonary embolism, but I was in the hospital when it happened. You just basically just crawl. You just, you just can't breathe, and you, you can't breathe. And but you know, people talked about you know, was it drugs? And no. that's a that's a well. There was some hard living there, and you know, we talked about it earlier. You know, like Barney was on Barney was on meds, and sometimes he couldn't afford those meds, and you know. He would do these stop buys at all of our places. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, yeah. The boardroom was one of his stop buys. Fuel was one of I'm his stop buys. I'm gonna show my picture. You, my you keep talking. I'll Dude, show my picture. He'd come in. We hot. just talked. He'd about come it. in. No, 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 no. I told you before. I Remember mean, him driving down 41st he's Avenue. Like, yeah, I, what's he's up, in his yo? truck. In his truck. I'm yeah. next to him, and he's, he's selfie video himself. Can you get that in there? That was a yeah. picture I just saw. It was Whoa. Barney. Can you get in there? Yeah, give me the camera. Yeah, you got the you got the phone. Yeah. But anyways, so Barney you know, would stop by and he would he would rattle. What's that TC on his neck, TC? Uh, it was a T-shirt. Oh, yeah. The t-shirt. actual T-shirt okay. has that on there. Yeah. Oh, totally dude. crustaceous yeah. to it. Yeah. Volcom was doing cool stuff back then. I'm not saying they're not now, but they definitely were. They were cutting edge and cool, and they were living off of Barney's cut and paste graphic style and like Barney was the very Vol- he, Barney was the Volcom rep. Dude, Barney's very responsible for Volcom's current mm-hmm. success. I mean, they're living off their old coolness. And part of that was Barney moved on to Ozzy Wright and there's mm-hmm. more people to credit, but 
damn if Barney didn't deserve like ownership, mm-hmm. a cut. And I know you know they. I, I'm Close with I've made Volcom suits since you day did. one forever. I know all the original owners from Troy Eckert and like um, uh, Richard Wolcott, and I have ultimate respect for them. But you know that that whole thing was was tough because Barney was a lot of you know he was their style, their vibe. I mean, he, nobody represented Volcom's early vibe better than Barney. The checkerboard, the stripes, the the wild punk rock cut and paste art. I mean, I thought all hell Barney. I, I don't know. Maybe you could inject a little bit. I think a part of it was a broken heart. A lot yeah, of it, you know, it like was. he had he had lived and uh, worked hard. He traveled the world. He walked down, got up for on photos. His hands. Yeah, he he got the shots. He 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 did the work, and then. Uh, most yeah, lovable character of yeah, all Yeah, but there's a time when, they, when, when the industry says, see you later. Oh, we done, we're done with you. Yeah, and I don't know how Barney It's a weird reality. Rough. Everyone yeah. has to deal well, with it. Well, you're dealing with that. Let's, let's, oh, let's, shit. Let's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah let's, I, let's fast hey, forward. Shoot. You own a Wetsu company. I do. And you have it's to... It's been a fucking fun ride. I'm not saying it's over, it's, but it's... For me, I'm nowhere near done. I'm just getting going. I don't it think like I can. It seems yet. like to me you're more popular than ever. To me, you're, to me, I go surfing. It it's depends Buell, on the Buell, perspective. Buell, it's Buell, Buell, Buell. Wetsuits, boards, wetsuits, boards, Buell, Buell, Buell. You know what he said earlier? He goes, <laughs> we're either kicking ass or going out of business. <laughs> I don't know. That's, when I see people, it's like, oh, dude, I'm, I mean, I can't tell you how. I mean, it, it means the world to me when I get stopped and somebody says, I'm really stoked for you. I mm. followed your plight and watched your business and I'm so stoked for your success. You deserve it. And like uh I was in Ace Hardware the other day and from the other aisle next to me I heard, Did you see who that was? That was Buell. He's the second most famous guy in Santa Cruz. Did you, did you know the spotlight did you know the spot when you started your shop over here and you started making wetsuit, did you know the spotlight was gonna be upon you? It was already uh, upon him. I already had. I, I think. thrive. On yeah. that. I do thrive on that. I'm a definitely shameless self promoter. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if you don't, if you're not your your own biggest fan, then who is? Yeah. And if you don't believe it, who is? And I'm not going to get all, you know, like uh, talking about yeah. like exactly how you. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you make something happen by bringing it forth. But I do believe in believing you in yourself. It. So. Can I interject right now? Yeah. Can we back up to the very beginning yeah. right now? Because right. you know, because we have Buells on the show. Mm-hmm. We all know Buell wetsuits, but let's meet Ryan Buell. So let's start with like your b- before Hotling wetsuits, before Buell wetsuits. Where how did Brian Buell get to let's say Hotline wetsuits point? And well, so our so, our, so so these people yeah. can get to know you. Shh. A life on the, you know, I'm a product of Santa Cruz. You know, Santa Cruz is a hotbed for surfers, lifeguards, baseball players, mm. athletes, athletes for sure. But yeah. there's an in, inordinate amount of professional baseball players in particular that have come from the area. There's Reggie Stevens and, mm-hmm. and a handful of football players that have come, Trent Dilfer, and but and you baseball. Mix, and you also mix those with musicians. This in this camp. Oh yeah, right? you mix Santa Cruz is a hotbed for oh. a lot of talent. Not more than what I'm discussing, but what I was influenced by was lifeguarding, surfing, baseball, and that's mm-hmm. who I am. Mm-hmm. And I was saying it earlier, like I got nothing to hide. I'm an open book, probably a bit to my own detriment sometimes. <laughs> think too much info, but I, I really like. I'm a work in progress. I'm not perfect. But how's, how, how's, how's it desire. going? Is, how's, how's work going? Work? Shh, dude, <clears throat> the struggle is real. It's tough, man. We're still dealing with inventory issues, like the matrix involved with deciding what sizes and what thicknesses you buy of a product that probably costs $100. So every mistake we make, you know, mm-hmm. we currently have... 600 extra small wetsuits. Let's do the math on that. You know, I'm not being secretive. Let's just guess well, that they're about $100 a piece. $60,000 right there? $60,000 mistake 
from somebody continually reordering the same amount without checking inventory, checking. I mean, there's a process you do. Excel spreadsheets work great. <laughs> you really, you put together a spreadsheet with reorder points that alert you. Like when you get to six, order eight. Yeah. Well, there was nothing like that in place. We just kept stacking twenties and hundreds on top how of it. That, how did that mistake? How did that mistake? Yeah, happen. <sighs> well, it just you know what you know. Just trying to, to grow too quick. We got it's drunk. Life. I got drunk last show. No, we got drunk on ourselves and our success because we did. We went from one point five million to three point five million in one year. How do you even do that? There's not enough money to fund that. I don't even know how we did it. Then we went from that more than tripled. Well, look, I back it up. And then, when, but does, does that? Do you, and we're like, do this you, is going to continue to happen. Do you lose control when uh, you bring in when money there's like money, that? Dude. Yeah. If I, I mean, if I could, I would back it. The fuck up. You and said that last year. Yeah, you said sure. I. I wish I was small. I wish I was smaller. You're more nimble. You're able to do stuff. You don't have to kowtow to all the big brands. And I really hate like that. We're on a pre-book eighteen month cycle and then the the manufacturers that make our wetsuits are on a, a similar cycle mm -hmm. it puts us so far out you're just not nimble i want to move i want to right. react i want to create and it's a far cry from when let's just say i was with hotline and managed our own usa factory if i could bring back mm -hmm. usa production which could be the next move well wow. is the are the people are you willing to pay People. more for an American-made wetsuit? That's what it comes down how to. There was a, how much more? Are you talking like it's fifty bucks? Or are you talking? No, 400? wetsuits are not two hundred dollars. Right. They're, they're, they're not. They're, you're talking. You're, they're you're going from. Well, I was gonna say you're going from four fifty to five fifty, probably, right? Yeah. yeah, we're going from yeah or ours. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. USA met, made wet. Well, okay. Let's do the math real quick. Okay, what's minimum wage? Mm -hmm. 16 bucks and soon to be like more that. yeah mm -hmm. 16 bucks it takes one employee one full day of work to make one wetsuit wow okay well that changes everything that's uh 128 dollars labor mm -hmm. on a wetsuit right right now the materials the materials mm -hmm. the rubber we get from either japan or taiwan and if we make our suits there the raw materials are quite a bit cheaper. If we import it into the U.S., they upcharge us mm -hmm. times four. And so not only is the labor more expensive, but yeah. so is, are the materials. Yeah. So, is, there a, is there a domestic? I mean, $128 would be the labor cost. No, not the Another labor, the material. $100 right. in materials after all the delivery. You got trim, you got, you got thread, glue, paint for the Paris. logos. You got tags. Yeah. I mean, so you can see how, uh, you know, creating a USA made wetsuit and paying your employees properly and taking care of your people, it costs money. And you it's, know what's sad about that? It's like I can see somebody out there picking Buell, like, made in China. <laughs> and the guy whips out his iPhone and he's wearing his how Nikes. Buell? Oh my yeah. God. How do you not take it personally when somebody says, I hate Buell or something? They're, oh, I'm talking about the wetsuit. It's not my call. Do you ever get upset so hard. on social yeah. media? Do you, do you take that well, personally? J-O-B's gone. Was, can we say that? Yeah. Okay. For sure. <laughs> but, yeah. like, you know, does that hurt a little sting a little bit? It hurt. It hurt watching. Friends. He ripped his sticker off and said, R.I.P. Buell. And then he went like this. And it was like, it was painful for him to say. And I know why. Because, you know, business is tough. But, you know what? I mean, the fact is, he made six figures a year with us mm -hmm. for five straight years. I'm not ashamed of no, you saying can't be. it. And, right. and, and we benefited, too. Mm -hmm. All for throughout sure. it. I mean, Our I'm, sales I'm, doubled overnight. I bet. Jamie O'Brien's the man. And he when is. You, yeah, when you partnered with him, I was like, wow. It was a, it was a match made in heaven. Yeah. He had a, me at hello. Mm -hmm. Right. And I did it right. We did it right. He inquired, and I said, what are you up to? We f I flew over there. Well, also too, I, I left with his. You made him. You made him some there. suits that kept that pretty boy safe in the water. You know, like saved his life. Yeah, right. You know, and because you got. He's an entertainer. Never say never. Yeah, he may be back. There was a 
There's a lot of gamesmanship. And, you know, to be honest, I mean, what's next for Buell? We need, I mean, if we are really going to continue this trajectory, which is quite grandiose, mm-hmm. and kind of in my mind it's too much, but, you know, I'm already in this deep. I have a partner. There's a lot of people involved. All the shops that committed their dollars to Did you say 300 wetsuits. shops? Yeah. 300. Not now, probably. There's been some people who probably, you know, I don't blame. It's been a rough couple of years. Mm-hmm. I mean. Does, did you, does, does Costco sell wetsuits or just boards? Just surfboards. Yeah. What happens mm-hmm. if, they sell, if they sell wetsuits? Did it all get returned as soon as they pulled it? The so that's same. a business move. I mean, do, do we have a sub subdivision called subdivision? Yeah. That's Dane's brand. But uh, do we have a sub brand called Rad Wetsuits that we design gear steer all towards costco you know i mean catch surf you're talking you know mm-hmm. they got odyssey yeah. right so catch surf sold here odyssey's across the street they avoid that whole mm-hmm. we're selling to our competitors uh is that a business tactic do you create a special brand for tillies and for well, I mean, some that's of the a, other i mean i'm in a building right here when when skateboarding came out road rider four was the wheel that was going out the front door they it started slowing down Slime balls started going out the back door. Two years later, slime ball was going out the front door and bullets going out the beyond you know I me. Mean? So there's always something yeah. that you think about that. And those are the challenges of owning a business. I own a business. I get the challenges. Um, I wanted to switch you, gears you, a little you, bit. You keep up what's going on. You well, well you, you, have you, you have to. Well, you have to try. Here's, here's the, uh, you know, another reality. I, you know, I, I kind of want to answer some questions that everyone wants to ask. And, you know, I... Like I the am, hard question? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I don't own Buell. I am Buell. Right. So, and I cherish that way more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do own that, shares. Want, do I own want, shares in want, my company. Do you rather be in that position than if you were, had to pick up the Buell? Fuck no. No, I Are think you'd kidding? rather be making a thousand lessons. I need suits. to be making every yeah. decision. I got money right. making. I got somebody who's all about money making mm-hmm. decisions it's like there's only one thing that matters and that's money that's just never been my mantra or i don't think people know besides people in the in the know that you don't own if you buell i know well that's because who wants to believe that who wants to believe that money owns buell it's like o'neill not owning owning o'neill you know it's like it's, it's a, you, you just assume I do, do. I do own a Shares. good percentage mm-hmm. of it, but I don't really know what that means because corporate, like bylaws and how contracts are put up, you got to choose your partner wisely. And like you got that very first contract is binding forever. Or is it? I don't even know, mm-hmm. you know, but this is not the world that I excel right. in. Right. And if you really want to take advantage of me in that sense, you probably could. And that's well, where I'm finding I am. The position I'm in, I thought I owned Buell. I Am met, I, I met, I don't really own, but, but I am Buell. Which I met is a way guy, more value. I met a guy one day and he goes, I own Buell. And I was like, uh, you don't own Buell. <laughs> like, who the fuck yeah. are you? I mean, we told him. Yeah. He also, that, that guy also knows that it's not, that him as an investor, it's a bad move for him to be doing that. That, you know, He's not. He's not an industry. He's a kook. What is kook defined by? Somebody who doesn't or has never surfed. It's not a put down unless you're a surfer. It's the ultimate put down. If you're a surfer, you're all, such a kook. That is the worst thing you can say about somebody. But hmm. to somebody who doesn't surf, it means nothing. Right. right yeah. I get who it. cares? Right. I had this talk with hmm. him today, and yeah, do we we need you, you we need you, investment. You told him and that today. You're I, a kook. Yeah, <laughs> well, we're in. We're well, going. He's got to lose. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Basically, a two year constant shuffle with people trying to buy Buell, mm-hmm. and not me because I ain't yeah. selling shit. But you I mean, come. You come with the deal. I, I, I yeah. would imagine what right. would Buell like yeah. without Buell. And so you're hoping. I, I mean, if you bought Buell and I decided. I don't like this setup. Yeah. I think I could probably make Buell that investment worth. Right. Mm. But I'm so easy to convince. Just 
just listen to my dream, my passion, my path, the blueprint I have. It's mm-hmm. already worked. Right. It's so simple. Create a cool vibe. Treat people, uh, treat people genuinely. Uh, treat the people that uh, respect you and have come along the way in the same manner, and it works. And we've we've already money or not, that's a success for sure. I mean, to have Jamie O'Brien, Dane Reynolds, Nat Young, Jacob Zeekly, not to mention Sage Erickson, the people I brought on board that felt the vibes and, and love. every kid at Pleasure Point. They, they, mm-hmm. I mean, that's the difference. Yeah. It, it's undeniable to me what got us here. And again, it's being real and passionate and people feeling it. But Knowing what you know now, let's say you could start all over again with a, with a different fuel company. Kind of. Well, things are different now. Okay. Athletes aren't. It's hard to sustain uh, that kind of payroll. I mean, for us, it, it was. Uh, we had some. We had million dollar months. Pretty easy to pay Jamie mm-hmm. a six figure mm-hmm. salary when you're having million dollar months. Right, lucky. The big checks we are dropping. We did that in a year right now. The yeah. shit is mm-hmm. hit the fan. Bigger brands have the money and funding to hold off until things cha- things are going to change. Mm-hmm. Right. The industry's it's oversaturated. There's a bunch of new brands. Everybody's pushing suits. I mean, you just go backwards a little bit. When COVID hit, everybody peeled back and got scared. We went, we did the opposite. We pushed all our chips in. We took people's capacity. We ordered more suits. And it turns out it was a great move. We took market share from O'Neill, from Rip mm-hmm. Curl. We became number one in CCS Surf Shop and Jack's, all right. nine locations. Tell me that's not mm-hmm. a success. Mm-hmm. And it was all based on the program, the people, the vibe it was real. If you don't have all that, then what do you have? Like right now, I feel like we're... You know, we're living off doing so many good things in the past, and we're just surviving until we can try and figure out, like, what's the next move and how are we going to do it? And yeah, it does take money, and we have been in like well, you did two say you have years. A lot of wetsuits are showing up. <clears throat> all your fall stuff's coming in right now? Is that yeah, what's... all our fall stuff's coming. Mm-hmm. We got soft boards coming. Haven't been this excited in a while. The board's uh, selling well, right? The board's selling good. The, well, we haven't had soft boards in quite a while. Okay. But we're gonna, we have a whole fleet coming in in about two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, previous sales staff made really bad decisions on you know, that size matrix we were talking about before. We haven't had a medium tall in two years. Like people want to stab me. That's they like walk the in the shop, they're like, you got medium talls yet? And I'm wow. like... And they're just like, and I'm like, you're so stupid. Thousand extra smalls. You ever made a lost sales log? Oh, I hate that. Yeah, I got to do one here. Okay, we have, I think we have 400 boards coming in, but our lost sales log is like over that. So if we sell our boards to half the people on that list, then we'll sell out and we'll be in the same trouble again. But uh, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous when you can't, fix a problem that you clearly see is happening not having having everything in place a good product a good team a vibe a marketing and plan then, and, then, and then, then not having the product were you were you included yeah. no in those talks i told you so was said 20,000 times and i even said to the whole group this is going to be painful when i actually do the i told you so which is right now every mm. day every time somebody comes in and says you got 8 foot soft boards yet mm. Do you have medium shorts? Right. Do you have XLSs? We're getting them. It takes a long time to like correct those problems. And also, you know, you know, right now, yeah, I, I'm kind of enjoying being a little bit smaller and not having the same grand right, right. world takeover plans. We are looking for a new partner. Mostly me looking for... My current partner, he's in over his head. He's he's not really a surf industry guy, and he wants. But if out. you get if you get another if you get another partner, does this, does this partner you have right now does he get the axe or is he still? Eh, he could be anything, he, okay. right? Because you know how that stuff you, works. Can you, can you get rid of that bad apple? 
Well, no, I'm not saying it's a bad apple, but it's going to be a bad match right now. Right. That's. I mean, I appreciate he put a lot of money into it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And but it worked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's just not working right now. Okay. So I do need a new partner. And mm-hmm. uh, okay, one of these three people has walked through the door and tried to buy Buell. Was it Kelly Slater? Ding. Was it Jamie O'Brien? Ding. Was it Bobby Martinez? Ding. And of those three, which <laughs> one to say all three? Which one? <laughs> which one would be my best partner? Oh, moving forward. Well, how fun would that be? To, mm, uh, well, actually, be working with Jamie instead of as a team rider, right? As a co-owner. Well, to me, I was. If they get involved with your wetsuit company, is it a profit? Op- is it a is it a profit opportunity for them? Absolutely. It is it? Yeah, for sure. It okay. The, the whole goal is to get... Jamie's... Uh, Jamie's he's a number, juggernaut. I mean, well, the, the Jamie's deals number he's one doing, to me. The deals he's doing with his Jamie O'Brien surf school, linking up with Twin Fin Hotel, mm-hmm. uh, Turtle Bay, mm-hmm. and then El Coronado. I mean, mm-hmm. and he sets up a surf school, finds the right surfers in the area that are genuine, legit, teaches them his style hopefully puts in catch surfboards and Buell wetsuits. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. the idea or plan. Or if he would have signed with us solely, it would have been, God, well, well, Buell, tell me the move wasn't really signing Jamie to softboards and wetsuits mm-hmm. and just world dominate. Well, because you also, you get this whole posse, you get his marketing, his add, social media. Add a clothing company to that. Yeah, right. And we're, it seems like a win, right? My yeah. hope for you is business that, is that J-O-B way. comes back. He might. But business has gotten the way every time. And yeah, mm-hmm. Kelly Sater did walk through the doors. It was during our height when we were doing a million a month. And he's like, I want a signature suit. Jamie O'Brien's got a signature suit. Dane Reynolds has a signature suit. Him and Dane have a funny thing. Mm. Ultimate respect. But yeah, there's mm. still a competition. And, was, <laughs> and, and Kelly wanted his own suit. And he wanted it to match his style, which is mm-hmm. eco-friendly. And he's like, Buell's the guy to do it. And I am. I'm like, I am. And I created the platform for the most eco-friendly wetsuit in the world, which is ultimately, it didn't work out with Kelly, but that platform ultimately became our own. Uh-huh. Can you smoke it when it wears out? He shouldn't be able to. <laughs> I think the Guiola tree... To me, that'd be the best The Guiola tree... Oh my God, like recycle your yeah, suit. just smoke it. <laughs> You're like, why are you wearing a spring suit? Like, oh, uh, I had to cut the legs yeah. off. It was a big Wait, weekend. It started out as like... A, started well, out with the, One sleeve a little shorter than the other. It starts out as a capri. Yeah. It's like a capri, and then now it's like short, short. You're in the water. You just take a little piece off and... Smokable. Gorgeous. Is that possible? Okay, I want 5%. You all heard that. Uh, like we, okay, so we, we currently... Like, let's talk a tiny bit about that eco-friendly stuff. Like, mm-hmm. we're way further along on this process. Wetsuits are not a dirty little secret anymore. They're not... They're not. It. We have water-based glues, That's which right. eliminated volatile mm-hmm. organic compounds, which is what was causing cancer and the ozone layer to be depleted. Mm-hmm. Recycled fabrics. Mm-hmm. Recycled tires in the no, get mixed it. into mm-hmm. the neoprene. TC, I got it. Ready? Recycled thread. He needs to get together. With ambient the lighting. People. Cruise foam. Yeah, they're the eco foam. Hire locally, source locally, mm. like everything matters. Even like you know where you're getting your raw materials. Is it is it coming from all the way across the country mm. in a car that's expelling to more be successful? Into the do you have to? I I, I kind of think of it as like a um, we talked about this earlier. Chevrolet, like the Corvettes are the, the are the Corvette is like that suit. It's the soft, buttery. Can I tell you a story about Walter Chevrolet and how he inspired me? All right, I love that. He came up with a car called the 70, 72, 70. And and, uh, at the time, he was part of a larger conglomerate. Like everything was under a certain car label. I can't remember. But Walter Chrysler ran Chrysler. He came out with a car called the 70. And they were like, Nobody wants to go 70 miles an hour. And he's like, 
They do. They just don't know it yet. And it was one of those moments where the designer is driving where the future is instead of the consumer. Because the consumer doesn't know shit the consumer about the... Hadn't gone 70 they yet. Don't, they don't go into the factory and see mm-hmm. the brand new neoprene and thread and glue. I do. So I make those decisions for the industry. I hate when the industry itself tries to drive it backwards. And this was one of those moments where Walter Chrysler was 100% certain everyone wanted to go 70. They didn't, nobody wanted to back him. He stuck to his guns. He made a car that went 70 and it absolutely slayed. Mm. And everybody Mm. had to make a car that went 70. And the race to make a car that went faster began. And like, I just think stick to your guns, be passionate. If you're passionate about something, then you never work a day in your life. I always say you're retired. Am I working? You're retired. Right you're retired no. if you get that. No, working. Are you guys working? No. No. Why? Because I do what I love. We do, I do Dude. what yeah. I enjoy. That's yeah. the best thing about it. Yeah. It's one thing the kids got. They know is like, I don't want to trade my time for a couple shekels. And they are right about that. Like, nine to five is not necessarily the best way to live your life. Like, find your passion. Find what it is. And if people don't know whether you're working or not, they, they're confused, yep. you're probably on to something. I always say you can go to college for four years and make 79500 a year. Or you could spend four years being passionate about what makes you happy, and you will make $79,500 a year at the end of it. It's your choice. Of you know, you could be in a cubicle. Yep. I always I had companies that wanted me to be in a cubicle. I'm not oh Shamu in the tank. I'm, I'm Shamu. Not Shamu in the I'm tank. Shamu in the learn, ocean. You can learn a trade and you're happy with what you're doing. You're a right. carpenter mm-hmm. or if you're a plumber. If you enjoy what that enjoy it. Yeah, it's it. huge. Yeah. Um so Buell. And real and plus let's not mention, are you any good at anything you don't like? True. I suck at it. I guess. Like if I don't like it. something, yeah. I, I have ter- a hard Well, I I lose patience. Yeah. So, um, before we go, I want your what you think is your best innovation you've contributed to wetsuits. The crisscross entry is still the most widely used entry in the industry. When Through the I, neck. When I very first uh, took over the job at Hotline in 1997, the very first zipperless wetsuits were being introduced. O'Neill famously dropped them toilet bowl bomb it was a velcro plush uh entry and it had what looked like a toilet bowl that came over the top mm. and then velcroed all the way down and then when you'd see people surfing in it you'd be all your toilet bowls up yeah. like it wouldn't stick so i came in right as that was happening and the materials weren't quite stretchy enough the designs were there there's a bunch of different designs but they weren't perfected yet and, and that material was expensive. Yeah. And so it was hard to make a It was a just full invented. Suit. And, right. and the, the manufacturing, uh, they were keeping their secrets very close to them. And mm-hmm. uh, the espionage that goes in, on in those factories, oh, I, I think, is funny. And what I, all I could hear was in Japan, they're making the world's stretchiest material, and it's breaking half the yarn like this. There's a machine that goes, whoop, bap, 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 whoop, bap, bap, bap. And oh. it breaks half the yarns, so it makes, makes it, it stretchier. But then those yarns would like start coming through. Anybody who ever had yellow or orange yarns peeking through your suit where it was overly stretching, those were the broken pieces which allowed it to stretch. So, so, so that first stretchy rubber but, was from breaking it apart? But that's when I came in there. But the stretchy material now allowed designs that we couldn't do before because you couldn't climb into something. Mm-hmm. So when I took over the design at Hotline, it had an over the, it had a flap going this way, that Velcro, and a flap running this way, that zipped down, and then the entry you climbed into was starting to you could see skin sometimes. Uh, right. It was way too yeah. close. And yeah. I said, How do I make that entry a t shirt? And I happened to be I happened to be in a hotel that had a uh, robe one night and I was like, wait a second. I looked at the robe and I actually put on the robe and I crossed it over itself. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. If I make a, like a budding flower, and if I make a hole like this and it crosses over itself, it's going to open up but still be 
tiny. Yeah. And I went straight to work on drawings and designs. And I was back in Santa Cruz within hours and uh, at the factory, at Hotline, working with the women that put together the wetsuits so well. The Hotline mm. women. Beautiful, yeah. They just, mm. they made a great wetsuit. Yeah, you're, you're, you're a car racer, yeah. right? You enjoy car racing. You watch, you watch IndyCar, Formula One, all these race car. Uh, I'm kind of a world of outlaws, right? How NASCAR How come the wetsuits don't have sponsors' names on them? Like, you know, oh, like, we talked about that before. That. Yeah, that I tried to do that with Adriano de Souza, but I, it was I, like, it was too much. It looked NASCAR-like. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's like Red Bull, yeah. uh, Taco Bell, Ty whatever, Excel, right. Titleist. <laughs> well, it's, that's been our point all early. along. Why do the wetsuit companies get all that? You know, it's it's interesting. Well, you, you know, know you I got, start... you got stuff on the board. Why not on the wetsuit? Well, I feel bad for the surfboard shapers because mm -hmm. people can just slap a sticker right, right. over their shaper's <laughs> name. <laughs> like you can't do that with a Buell. I seen people try and pen it out. You know, you are. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it, you can't do it and. I also knew that my business, which was a lot of private label for other companies, I was like, well, this is temperamental. All somebody has to do is come out with a wetsuit sticker, and I'm out of, mm -hmm. I'm out of the private label business. Because mm -hmm. if you could just Iron on. peel a sticker, right. and it's almost there, the way mm -hmm. they do heat presses, gosh, the, yep. the way we're doing sublimation and Digital all the different printing, printing now, now yeah. I, I think that might be... Uh, the next kind of cool custom phase part of wetsuits, but well, we're not quite there yet. I see it as doing one-off stuff. You know, like doing, yeah. you send a picture and you put your kid's photo on your chest and you do that in-house in for a hundred bucks. So there's a guy named the Blind Surfer that got a hold of me yesterday and uh, he's like, it, this guy's really, really good, uh, but he, when he surfs with uh, a crowded lineup they don't know he's blind and so it kind of becomes a danger because they just don't know so he actually just recently he tied a piece of caution tape around a hat and he noticed that a lot of people were like oh something's going on here and they're kind of mm -hmm. clearing his way so he had an idea for a custom wetsuit he said his team developed it looks like ai mm. <laughs> <laughs> looks like ai yeah he, he developed three Caution tape wetsuit designs, all of them were awesome. And mm. I was like, if I could make all three of these, I would. I'm going to figure out a way to make this guy his custom caution tape wetsuits because there's always yeah. well, there's always a way to make it. But to I me, love to me, that that's stuff. community. That's giving back. This guy deserves to have a wetsuit to be safe. He deserves to surf. And then you blow that up on your social media. Yeah, well, and then you're just, it's you know, fun. It's, yeah, it's fun. I'm going to buy Buell. Yeah. <laughs> stupid, serious wetsuits. Um, before we go, one other thing I wanted to say is... Solar-powered suits. Ooh, well, yeah. That's, what do you want to say, TC? Well, I just wanted to say that um, through all the uh, ups and downs of your business life, you have had some amazing hits. And I think that Any home run the hits, well, it worked both. Um, but it's I feel swinging. like I feel like there's more Buell hits down the road. Like, in, yeah, I mean, I'm you, not done. And your energy, yeah, your energy, your energy, your energy's there. Um, your passion's there. So what we need was, is somebody. I don't think I peaked yet. I was someone to throw a few million bucks your way and get this thing on on the road, right? I mean, could you? I mean, that that could do it. Right. Actually, it's yeah. not that much. Right. And the percept. I mean, we're right there. I don't. I, I say I feel like I'm starting over, but the fact is, if we were starting over, damn, do we have a head start? We do have 300 names in our computer of that our distributors. Buyers, right. We do have international business that we started that we've had a hard time juggling. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, it's right there, and I feel like just. Like that, it could I feel be like switched, he's on Shark you know? Tank right now. <laughs> I'll, say this, I'll, I'll say this about Buell. Taking the Shark Tank. I'll, I'll say this about Buell. <laughs> Going back to the Bonnie show, I think it was the first time he came on the show. I don't remember, but he, every time I've asked, every time I've asked him to come on the show, he said yes. Mm. Every he's never said no. Every single time, he said yes. You got to respect that for sure. You know, Both you're times. you're an active human being. Yeah. You're not afraid to do stuff. Well, and you know, and I would love if you know, I love when people ask me questions and I actually get to answer them because I certainly perception is one thing, and again, like depending on your perspective of that person, mm -hmm. it's, 
it could look totally different. So, you know, I don't know. I, I'm more passionate than ever and I'm nowhere near done and business requires you to reinvent yourself and your business and you better be nimble and, and adapt. Well, I'm so, proud of you because, you know, your sandcastle, a tower's kind of fallen over and needs a little propping up. But you're willing to talk about he's it. He's writing the shit of shit. Yeah, but you know what I mean? Shit. Yeah, but and that's... Hey, the, business it, is more than... I mean... It's, you, we we, we can hype we, this thing up and tell a bunch of false stuff, but you're you being You know honest. what I'm proud of? We've had great product the entire time. Our product's never been the problem. Mm -hmm. And to me, yeah, everything else is bullshit. If you don't commit... Like, I say I, my passion is to make the best wetsuits in the world. And if that's not there, the rap, mm -hmm. it's bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's bullshit right. mm -hmm. like if mm -hmm. i'm rapping about something and it's not that like that stuff the 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 peacocking the pumping my chest at the top of the mountain that stuff is only works when everything else is is tight mm -hmm. and our yeah. wetsuits have always been good they fit good they perform good uh they're they're incredibly well priced, way too low. As I, it's an insult to me yeah. that we sell two hundred dollar wetsuits. I'm like, that's a three hundred and sixty dollar wetsuit right. all day, always has been. You see it for ninety nine bucks sometimes. I've it's seen like some smoking sales up smoking, there. Smoking, yeah. desperate, mm. kicking the nuts, desperate. Yeah. So get it now, mm -hmm. especially at juniors. Uh, we over order way too many juniors. So More anybody food. who has a kid right now, they can go up there and get like a hundred dollar wetsuit. You think one hundred fifty? What is yeah. it? Somewhere in that yeah. range. You yeah. heard that right here. We're gonna blow that up this week. We're yeah. Blow that up. No, that's a that's so a. Really I've never been point. more proud of like our girl. We have a new girls division that the suits perform fit. Like nobody has dedicated the time and effort and money towards girls wetsuits. They make girls wear junior boys wetsuits. Mm -hmm. We. We took a chance and made that division, and it is, it's killer. I drove a bike, by the way. Keanu yeah. Miller's on the hey, building now. we got the new yeah. windows. Yeah, yeah I saw I'll some new windows. That. Yeah, so, you know, Bud Miller, uh -huh. Amy's daughter, Keanu, on the There's wall. Right. And there. Lainey Star. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. And as well as the otter. I put the otter on there. Oh, you got like the otter there. up there, he's too? Otter 841? It, yeah, he's like chomping one of our softboards. Nice. Uh, uh, I wonder if the 841 prefers Buell softboards. Oh, yeah. Is that like... Well, he, did, remember he, attacked, he attacked Parts Grom and Chad Underhill. They were on a Buell. So, mm -hmm. I don't so know. maybe so. I don't know. He looks like... He, I don't know what he's doing with his teeth, but he's like sharpening his teeth on him or something. <laughs> it tastes good. <laughs> Mr. Buell, thanks for coming to the show. That's amazing. Ever um, since I was 23, only thing happened to me was the stretchy neoprene. Still Buelling, riding on these brands because they lame. You know, we got the best wetsuits in the game. Can you feel me? Blame it on my love for the ocean. Get out the way when these wheels are in motion. Wetsuit devotion, neoprene explosion. Our suits are light, but this game is heavy. We stay true because they're warm, light, and stretchy. So bring it on. It's time to let loose. Bad Buell, hit him up. Wetsuit still Buelling. <laughs> Right until the day I die. Woo! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> hey, Thanks Neil. Go. We'll see you uh, next week. Next week? Yeah. But you know who's on? The mayor of Watsonville, I think. The mayor of Watsonville. Uh, we got the mayor on we're next week. Road. We're going on the road. We're going to go to Ozzy's Pizza. We're making rap. We're taking the show Thank on the rap. road. <laughs> Ryan Buell in the bacon house. Rap, Thanks, bacon TC. wrap. Thanks, bacon yeah. wrap. Jalapeno poppers. Oh, oh, we're doing it. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in to the Off the Lip Radio Show. Ryan Buell, you can back. check out the shows. Uh, check out the shows. OffTheLipRadio.com. We'll be blowing Buell wetsuits up. Woo! We got Barney in the house with us. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great week. Good night. Do something.